street rods have been essential role players in the ongoing love story of high performance. Think of the term street rod, and you'll no doubt picture classic Fords or Chevys with lowered suspensions, tricked out motors, and hot paintwork set off by just the right wheels and tires. This 1947 Ford convertible is an example of what happens when the street rotting instinct is allowed to express itself. But now, that all-American expressionism is taking a different twist, as the new wave of the modern street machine is based on our old friend, the pickup truck. Pickup trucks, especially full-size Chevys, are fast becoming the basis for some outrageous street machines. We spent a recent afternoon looking at some of these new age street rods and talking to some of the people who are involved in this emerging motoring movement, which seems to have started where so many other automotive innovations are born, Southern California. We spoke to Gene Dubois of Downey, California, who described his powder blue Chevy. Here we have a Chevy, one ton dually. We've dropped it five and seven inches all the way around. We've had the Alcoas uh, cut by Boyd and chromed which you won't find too easily. It's not an easy thing to chrome. We've had graphics done all the way around, uh, the front roll pan and the rear roll pan. Make it blend a little easier and color paint it to match. Very pretty, very fun. Carlo Camello of San Pedro owns a great looking 91 Chevy. I love it, rides like a Cadillac. You get lots of looks and it's different. Jim Ryan on the left is the associate publisher of Sport Truck Magazine, and Hoyt Vandenberg on the right is the editor. They've had a front row seat as this fairly new phenomenon has taken off. These vehicles are all very affordable, which makes them a little bit different than this, the street market. These are all easily insured, two-wheel drive, rear-wheel driven. Um, again, they will be the hot rods of the 90s. The trucks you see here have um, been personalized. Obviously, they've all been lowered. They've uh, been dechromed. They take most of the factory trim off, uh, leaving it as clean as possible looking. Um, the paint jobs are of prime importance. The wheels and tires have all been changed. Uh, most of the modifications to these trucks are not performance oriented. They're oriented towards the way the vehicle looks. Although customized trucks are predominantly appearance projects now, powertrain upgrades just might be the next level. The performance aspect will be probably the next evolution of these type of vehicles. We're seeing a lot of engine swapping. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the V6, V8 type swap conversions. Um, again, this, is, this is, will, is and it will be evolving into more of a hot rod market. Jim and Hoyt had brought along a project truck that took a slightly different path than most. What we have behind me here is a, a rare bird. It's a, a customized late model Ford, which is, as you can tell by most of the trucks here, they're usually Chevrolet. Um, this is not something most people do. The Ford is a little more square and it's not quite as popular to customize. We got together with Ford Motor Company, Hot Rods by Boyd, and Xenon, the company that made the ground effects along the, the, the back of the bed and the bottom of the truck, and tried to dress up a Ford and make it uh, something in a presentable type of uh, custom truck. We're not sure if it's a success or not, but it is definitely different. With bodacious paint and graphics, custom wheels from people like hot rod legend Boyd Coddington, and lowered suspensions, you could dig pretty deep into your bank account to tool up a truck like these. But if you see Bob Colmas at Hibbard Chevrolet in Claremont, California, he can simplify the process. We lower the trucks, we put wheels and tires on them, and we do a little graphic and a little paint work and uh, personalize the truck. It saves the consumer from going out and having to do all this stuff himself as far as lowering and, and uh, getting different things done on the truck. And like anything else, when it comes to custom trucks, you can spend a little or spend a lot. Gary Specco of Torrance, California customizes trucks. What we'll do is we'll take a stock truck and put a custom paint job on it, lower it, put tires and wheels on it, and turn actually a $15,000 truck into a $25,000 truck. Tim Susamian is the owner of Trader's Truck Accessories, which has become a payload of opportunity for him. We're just scratching the surface, so to speak. I think that the phenomenon that we see here, and especially in Southern California, is uh, not even yet hit its stride. I feel that we have a whole new wave of uh, trucks to come. General Motors is just coming out with their new Blazers, Suburbans, and Crew Cab Dillies, and I think that uh, that being one of the true, true tow vehicles on the marketplace today, those three items, I think we're going to see a lot of strides hit with that. Uh, a lot of our customer base is recreational related, whether it be in a 
a boat or pulling a car or a dune buggy or motorcycles, jet skis. Uh, they're really the most versatile uh, vehicle out there on the market today. They're pickup trucks, the hot rods of the 90s. Big, brawny, beautiful, and most definitely 